I think we have it. Um, um, I've been wanting to talk of this, uh, about this for a long time. I want to talk to you about the book of Seven Seals and why that's really good news and not bad news for the Christian. The Christian in a right relationship with God. Throughout, throughout Revelation, there is, um, there is messages. Uh, for example, uh, when he was writing to Philadelphia, which he said nothing wrong about Philadelphia. And I have a presentation on uh, chapters 2 and 3 to show that they are uh, end-time churches uh, that he's talking to. But to them, he said, I'll keep you from the hour of trial that comes on the whole world. So there's a, a level of protection for us as we get into this time period of this seven seals being opened. And um, there are other places too. For example, when, when the, the, the servants of God were sealed, he said uh, to the locusts that were released out of the bottom's pit, don't touch anything that belongs to me. Just only those men that have not the seal of God on their forehead. So there's a level of protection for us during that time, but it's what shortly follows that. For example, the millennial time is, is, is contained within the sixth seal. And so we, the tribulation brings us to the millennium. It brings us to the new earth. It's not a long ways off. And so the new earth is everything Raymond was talking about. Okay? So that, that will be in the end part of this lesson to show you what we're coming to. Now, my gift is comparing scriptures. And so what I'm, what I'm going to do is, if, I, if I'm going to give you opinion, I'll tell you this is my opinion. But I'm going to compare scriptures to show you to let scriptures define themselves, to show you this is what this is. It's obviously the same event. You just go, go from old to new and let the Old Testament prophets show you what the New Testament prophets were talking about. That's what you do, and then you get the whole picture. Or you let Jesus tell you what they're talking about, okay? And we'll do that today, by the way. Okay, so the first thing we want to do um, is we want to say this about the seven seals. That when we look here, there, there was a search in heaven to find someone worthy to open the book, and John started weeping because it looked like there wasn't one, but of course Jesus was worthy. And so he said, Behold, the line of, uh, of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So this is what's important. This is chapter 5, looking for someone to open the seals of the book in God's hand. And it's Jesus that opens the book. And as soon as he is proclaimed as the one to open the book, in the same chapter, this is what he says. This is why he's worthy to open the book. Because he has redeemed us to God by his blood. Okay? And so out of every kindred, tongue, nation, and he's also done this. He's, he's, he's made us kings and we will reign on earth. And so everybody's not a king, obviously. But he, the Bible says when he returns, he's going to have the government on his shoulders. He will choose the government. And he will choose his kings. And so... Quit worrying about the current government and trying to fix it and save it. There's a whole new government coming and it's on his shoulders. And it won't be corrupt. It won't take a bribe. It won't ever be wicked. It won't ever be bringing drag queens into your kindergarten class. It won't be doing any of this. Okay? It won't do any of that. It'll be righteous. And we'll be done with wickedness. Okay? So I'm just letting you know I'm signed up for that. What I want you to see from this, the same one that opened the books, the seals of the book, is the one that loved you and redeemed you by His blood. That's who's opening the book. Jesus opens the seals that brings the destruction upon the wicked. Okay? You're not appointed to wrath. We will get to that. Alright? Now, understanding Revelation. This is the first thing I want to say is that in the beginning of the book, in verse 1, he says he, he, that Jesus Christ, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, he gave it to his servant John to show his servants the things that must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it. So this is a book of signified language. I don't believe it guessing at any of it, but I may have opinion about some of it that's not defined, okay? But there's somewhere in the Bible a prophet has told you what these symbols are. And you guessing at it is just nonsense. Okay, that's what I want to tell you about that. This whole shortly come to pass thing, as soon as he said that, he points to, he cometh in the clouds and every eye shall see him. So this book of Revelation contains, um, it, it doesn't matter what you're looking at, most of the book is con contains the, the seals, the, the vials, and the trumpets. Well, Jesus comes in the sixth 
seal and the sixth vial and the seventh trumpet. And this is the same layer leading up to his coming. And then guess what? You get to chapter 14, it's the harvest of the world. You get to 19, Jesus comes with his whole army. You get to 20, and it's the millennial time. You get to 21, it's the new earth. It's the same picture over and over again leading up to his coming. That's what Revelation is. Okay? And so as soon as he says that, the, that this is sent to show you the thing that shortly must come to pass, he points to Jesus coming in the clouds as being one of those events. Okay? So shortly come to pass to Jesus is all the way to the new earth. Because that's what chapter 20 is. The millennial time, chapter 20, 20, 21, 22 is the new earth. It's all the way up to that. All of that is short, included and shortly come to pass. And I say that and you know why. Because preachers are trying to close the book. They want to control information. They want everybody to be saying the same exact thing. And so they try to tell someone, this has all already happened. Don't look. Nothing to see here. But we know that can't be true because of the first prophecy in the book saying is Jesus coming in the clouds. And that's part of what shortly is going to come to pass. So it's all short to Jesus, y'all. Okay, let's just get on his page and look at his perspective. Get it from his perspective. Okay? So what we want to see here is including in these things that shortly must come to pass is Jesus coming in the clouds, the harvest of the earth, the marriage supper of the Lamb, the new earth, and the thousand year reign. All that's in 20 through 22. Okay? This is in chapter 14. Uh, marriage supper of the Lamb is in 20. Okay? Contextually, this book includes many layers of what is transpiring in heaven and earth leading up to Jesus coming in the clouds. That's what this book does contextually. And that's why I mentioned everywhere he appears. The first, this is the first prophecy in the book. Well, guess what? The book closes with the same prophecy. Jesus coming. And it, same, same way it closes, okay? In chapter 22, that's the way it closes. And so th that's what the book's about, what's going on leading up to his coming. So <clears throat> we must never guess at the signified language, the sentence signified. The author, who is God, gave all the prophets all the information that they wrote down and he defined all the signified language through the prophets. We can just find where he said what it was. Somewhere a prophet tells you, okay? Now, <clears throat> I want to look at uh, I want to look at a review of chapter 6. I want to start here in verse 1 and 2 because um, anybody I ever tried to listen to, I don't listen to anybody anymore. I was a student for Campbell, a very, uh, student of Campbell a very long time. The thing he taught me to do is you got to look at the book because you just got it as it just fell from heaven and you have to just separate everything from man's and from everything that's God's. And you got to compare Scripture. So that's what we're going to be doing today, comparing Scripture. Okay? So this white horse, I hear all these people saying that's the Antichrist and all that. It's, it's just mind-boggling how they get that. But when we, look in, when we look at who this is, see, I, I saw when the Lamb opened up one of, the, one of the seals and heard, as it were, the noise of thunder of the four beasts saying, Come and see, I saw, behold, a white horse. If we want to know who the white, who's on the white horse, we go to Revelation 19, and there on the white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. That's not the Antichrist. That's Jesus. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. Jesus is bringing the war upon his enemies. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. He was clothed in a vesture, in a vesture dipped in blood, and, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which followed him in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes this sharp to his sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and then he will rule them with a rod of iron. What I want to show you is that it's Jesus on the white horse, He's the one sitting on it. It's the same language. He has a crown or many crowns. He has his own crown, but many crowns as he rules. He rules all the kings that he chooses. And uh, we see that he went forth conquering. That's the same as smiting the nations with a sword out of his mouth. It's the same exact thing, different words. So when you compare scriptures, you see what he's talking about. Okay? Don't guess at it. If you guess at it, you're not going to get it right. Okay? All right. Now, we've got to answer the second question. He that sat on him, he had a bow. Okay, he had a bow, but where are his arrows? When we go to the Song of Moses in Deuteronomy 32, verse 23 to 25, he says, I will heap mischief upon them. I will spend my arrows upon them. And he begins to identify these arrows. They will be burned as hunger. 
They, will, they shall be burnt with hunger and, and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them and the poison of serpents of the dust and the sword. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin and the suckling with, uh, with the man of gray hairs. And so he says that whenever that when, when his nation or his people turns wicked, he spins his arrows. And this is what he sends upon them, say, hunger, destruction, teeth of beast, and the sword. And Deuteronomy 32, verse 41 and 42, the same chapter, and the Song of Moses, he says, I will wet my glittering sword in my hand, take hold on judgment, and I will render vengeance. So see, this is the day of vengeance when the seals are being opened. It's a day of vengeance. I will render vengeance to my enemies. I will reward them that hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemies. And so there's a day of vengeance. There's a day for him to punish the wicked. And so this bow... He, the arrows is, is sealed two, three, and four, and we're going to see that, and five. That's what the arrows are. Those are his arrows, okay? Now, before we go, I want to look at one other place. He had a bow, so in Ezekiel 5, verse 15 through 17, he says here, I'll execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury and in fierce rebuke. So see, he's rebuking the people that are, are perverse and wicked, and, and he's saying that he's executing in judgments. And that's what the first few seals are. They're judgments. The arrows are judgments. Because the wrath doesn't happen until uh, seal 6. And we're going to show you that. And we're not, we're not here for the wrath. Because it's God's servants. The Bible says we're not appointed to wrath. So we're moved. Okay? And I will show you that. I'll show you where that's at. Okay? So here he says, I shall execute judgments thee in anger and in fury and in fierce rebukes. I, the Lord, have spoken it. I shall send upon them evil arrows of famine for their destruction. Famine upon you, and I will break your staff of bread. So as we see there's a, there's a real, um, these arrows are shot at the wheat supply, the, the, the grain that we make bread out of. And I will send famine and evil beasts. Again, beasts turning on men, men is part of it. And I will bring a sword. Ward is part of it. And I, the Lord, have spoken it. And so when we get to um, Revelation 6, verse 2, and we see uh, we're only able to get a, um, a few seals on here, two seals, I think, that we're looking at. He had a bow. So when he opened the second seal, what happened? He says here that there went forth um, a horse that was red, and power was given to him that set their own to take peace from the earth. So people began to talk war, talk very carelessly about nuking each other or something like that. Okay? that they should kill one another. And there was given him a great sword. And so he says here, And when we had opened the third seal, I heard the beast say, Come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse, and he that sat upon him had a pair of balances in his hand. So this third seal is shortages and inflation because you see, he says here, I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. I'm going to talk to you about that for a minute. But, but here in Revelation, this is a modern version. We, this is, I've heard scholars say this, that a penny in that day was a day's pay or whatever. And so it says a quart of wheat for a day's pay or three quarts of barley for a day's pay. So the ideal is inflation. There's still food, but there's inflation. If there was something like that going on, we might have need to worry, huh? Okay? And so what we're seeing then is war and inflation at first. The starvation follows. And I don't, I don't know how much... Some of y'all are watching alternative media because that's the only place you're going to hear what's going on. But since the 1st of April, 24 food processing plants have blown up and burned down in America. Two of them were hit by planes. Twice! They were hit by planes. Okay? There's a systematic destruction of the food supply right now. And there's a reason for it. And if you listen to real, the, if you listen to fake news, they'll tell you the reason there because they can't stop saying New World Order over and over and over again. Which will the be, be the beast that rises up out of the sea. Okay? And so, when he says, see thou hurt not the oil and the wine, this is my opinion. The oil and the wine are his. Because you have to crush olives and grapes to get it. 
What we're talking about is the people that's gone through refinement before the tribulation. The people that are walking in secret sins, that are walking in disobedience, willful disobedience, they're not going to be protected. That's why I call this lesson, it's good news for those in a right relationship with Him. Those that were crushed beforehand to get the product that God's looking for, they're protected. And you're not feeling... We've been talking about this through COVID. Yeah, um, there's no body bags in here. And the only one body bag we've had is the one who went and got the vaccine. Okay? We all got it, got over like the flu. Just telling you. Hurt not the on the wine. There's a level of protection for you if you'll trust God. There's a level of protection for you. And so that's what I think that is. Now, that's my opinion. Okay? I think the oil and the wine are His. It's just those that have been refined. Like olives and grapes were, are crushed. Our trials crush us. Bring our dross. Something comes out of that refinement. See? So, anyway, that one's my opinion. Where are His arrows? So we want to answer this question again. Then we're getting down to the fourth seal. And so it says, And when, I heard the, when He had opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat upon him was Death, and hell followed him. And there was power given to him over the fourth part of the earth. Now there is a bigger death toll to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and beast the earth. And that's identical to what we saw in the Song of Moses and Ezekiel. So the death toll is up here when we get to the fourth seal. And we're saying death by all kinds of means, with pestilence maybe and other things. But this is, this is what his, his arrows are at the fourth seal. It's everything we saw in the Song of Moses in Ezekiel chapter 5. All of it is there. So fourth seal brings death tolls of a fourth part, which will include starvation because now after inflation there is hunger. So you can see where we might be between inflation and starvation. See where these seals are. But when he says, Hurt not the oil and the wine... <clears throat> That means he has a plan for you. And so that's what I think. I think that uh, it'll be the same as it's been up till now. We'll always be okay. We'll always be okay. I'm not afraid of it anymore and I was COVID. Okay, just so you know. So in this section, we're going to show Christians in a right relationship with God are exposed to these judgments, these arrows part, but not the wrath part. Okay, this is what we want to try to show you through the scriptures at this point. <clears throat> Those walking in unrepentant sin are appointed to wrath. When we look at 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9, it says, God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain the salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we, we look over here in Ephesians 2 and 3, for example. These are the people that are appointed to salvation. And that's why we match the blue with the blue and the wrath with the, the green, with the green wrath to the wrath, see? And so what it says, In time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air. The prince of power of the air, that's what we used to be. And he talks about what that is working now in these children of disobedience. If you're a child of disobedience, you're a child of wrath. He says, among whom we also had our conversation in times past in the lust of flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. We're filling our minds full of trash and garbage and pornography or whatever it is. And we're by the nature of the children of wrath, even as others were. So you used to be that, but you repented. See? But those walking in that are still children of wrath. And so in Colossians 3, he says, Mortify therefore your members which are on the earth. And what he's talking about... Well, we see in Galatians 5, 27, I believe, where it says, Those that are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and lusts. Put that to death. All the passions, lusts, the anger, the lust, all that, is supposed to be crucified with Christ. And he says, mortify that, put that to death. He says, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. So the children of disobedience are appointed to wrath, but those who mortify and don't walk that way anymore, you're not appointed to wrath. And that's all we're pointing out. We're going to hit this again because the free grace theology in the world, all these verses are missing from their theology. And we want to make sure that some of those that are falling for that get to see some of this. So 
when he talks about us not being appointed to wrath. In Ephesians 5, we'll look down a little further. Verse 3, But fornication and uncleanness and covetous, even it let it not once be named among you as become of saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which is not convenient, but the rather of giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. If you are walking in this kind of disobedience, then you will be included in the wrath. And if you're not, you won't be, because you're not appointed to wrath. Now, that's all I'm saying about that. All right? The end of the arrows of judgment and the beginning of wrath. Now what we want to do is we're going to show that this is really a thing. So some deaths occur before the beast rises. The beast rises to power for a period of 42 months or 1260 days or three and a half years or a time, times and a half a time, which is a sneaky way of saying three and a half because three and a half years is 42 months, which is 1260 days which is a time, time and a half a time in sneaky language. So all of that is the same time period of the reign of the beast in the tribulation. Good news is they're all destroyed before the new earth and not even a little bit of it comes in to the new world. All of it's gone. They lose. Okay? And so what we want to see here in Revelation 6, verse 9 and 10, and when he had opened the fifth seal, he saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain, so there is going to be an increase of hatred towards Christianity. Some of that has been working since Obama. But there's going to be more and more and more. And because the Christians who have faith in God, they'll probably use this vaccination thing. There will be new diseases and they'll say the unvaccinated is causing it and it'll be the Christians that are unvaccinated. There will be things that they will work that will turn more and more hatred towards the righteous. And that's just the way Satan works. So there are people that die. They were killed for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice. They wanted to know from heaven how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given to each one of them, and it was said to them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as if they were, and it should be fulfilled. So there is a... There is a group of people, unprotected people that are out there that start repenting. I'm just telling you, that's the way it's written in Revelation 12. There are some that are protected, some that are out in it. Some of those go through the tribulation and their refinement takes place in the tribulation because they weren't oil and wine before the tribulation, okay? And that's just what I'm saying. That's the way I see the scriptures, okay? So when we look here, we're going to see from Revelation 12. We'll see a, little, a lot from Revelation 12 today. We'll have to go back and forth. There appeared another uh, wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared. And so this, this woman is the church. So it is. She, she, there's, that God has prepared a place for her to go, and He's going to feed her there. That's why you're not starving to death. God's going to do it. There will be a lot of supernatural things happening, not just a thing or two. All right? And, and she's going to be fed there the whole three and a half years, the whole 1260 days. That's how long she's in this place prepared. The whole tribulation. Okay? And he said that, and when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman. The, the red dragon is Satan, by the way, which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given wings, this is verse 14, to a woman were given wings of a great eagle, is saying the same thing here, that, that she should fly into the wilderness to, to her place where she's nourished for a time, times and a half a time. So it's the same time period that he's talking about, the 1260 days, three and a half, from the face of the serpent. Wherever she is, the face of the serpent, he can't get there. He can't do anything to her, the, the woman that's protected. Now I'm telling you right now, those, those are the ones that were sealed. Those are the ones. The angels went and sealed. That's who they are. Okay? So, so there are some deaths here that happen. And, I, and then in verse 17, 18 of chapter 12, we see that there are some people that are out, that are out of these, these areas that God's prepared. And things, are hap they, things can happen to those people too. Okay? 
All right. Now, the Christians in a right relationship with God are removed to a place prepared uh, of God between the fifth and sixth seal when this wrath is poured out. We're going to start working on that a little bit. Now, this is the whole thing here. I'm going to read it to you, and then we're going to start breaking it down in sections because I can't put all this in a split slide. Okay? So, he beheld when the sixth seal, when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became back black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree cast their untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of her places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in dens and rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. So this is where the wrath is actually being poured out. For the great day of His wrath has come. That's what I want you to see. It hasn't come till now. The arrows have been fired, the arrows of judgment. So there's judgment, 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 and then it's wrath. Now this wrath, I'm going to tell you right now, is the vials of wrath blowed up in a big detailed picture. That's what that is. And so here you can see that Jesus has come and the wrath has come but in this big blown up picture of the wrath, Jesus comes uh, in the sixth vial, and that's during the Armageddon battle, when all the kings of the earth gather themselves together, and it says, he says, a short little phrase, I come as a thief. Most preachers can't even see that. It's invisible to them. But that's when he comes. Okay? I come as a thief. And so that's what's happened here. He's come, and they see him, and they want the rocks to hide him from him. Okay? And we will show that from Old Testament prophets, that that's what's actually happened in a moment. Okay? Let's start doing some side-by-sides. Let's ask Jesus what this means. Jesus, what does this mean? So we saw that this, this event is happening. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. The moon became as blood. Stars fell from the heaven. And it's like this wind shaking all these figs out and all these stars are coming down like figs of, 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 on a fig tree that got blown by... You, know, you get the idea. And he said to the mountains, and he says, Follow us and hide us from the face of him that sit upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So in Matthew 24, 3, what did they ask? When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? That's what they ask in verse 3. And so this is where he's getting to the answer to that coming and the end of the age business. Okay? And so he said, After the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened. Same exact thing. The moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. This is obviously the same event. And there shall be, and this is the sign that appears in the heaven, the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That's what they're seeing, Him on His throne, when they stand, hide us from Him. And all the tribes of the earth shall mourn when they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. That was the first prophecy of the book. With power and great glory. And this is where He gathers us. We're not appointed to wrath. He's coming for wrath. And He sends His angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And He gathers together His elect from the four winds of the heaven from one end to the other. And that's where they go to their place prepared for that 1260 days. That's where it happens. Okay? We'll show you other verses that's showing that. But I'm letting you know now that Revelation 12 is that picture. Okay? The Lord has been reaching out to me a long time on that picture. That's why I know about the picture. It's not because I'm smart. Most of my night visions are about this event. They're about when He gathers us. I'm just letting you know. That's your warning. Okay? So, we can see they're taken, see, the, the, they're gathered and taken. The, the elect, not everyone, but the elect are gathered here. The rest are left to the wrath. Okay? Now, all the people that try to squeeze Matthew 24 in the past, make it all a long time ago, everyone I ever showed that to, they couldn't, but you know what, they, I'll get back with you. Because they know no angels been sent. They know the elect hadn't been gathered. It's impossible that any of that's ever happened. Alright? So I'm just letting you know that's going to happen. 
Jesus is letting us know it happens right here with this matchup. Okay? Now, God showed the prophets in what this was. We saw all this. I'm not going to read it to you again, but we're going to do some matchups here. In Isaiah 34, verse 1 and verse 4 through 8, Come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. The indignation of the Lord is upon all the nations. See, that's His wrath. It's coming. The indignation. His fury upon their armies. And He hath utterly destroyed them. Now that's the end. We know that's going to be at the end of the tribulation, but He's telling it before it happens. And He delivered them to the slaughter. The slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And the host of heaven shall be dissolved. Now the host of heaven, I'll show you, are the angels. That's, that's the stars that are falling. The stars are the angels. The fallen angels. The ones that rebelled. They're coming here. They are coming here. Satan's coming here too. They're getting cast to the earth. That's in Revelation 12. All the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and the host shall fall down as a leaf falleth out of a, off of a vine from the vine, and as a fallen fig from a fig tree. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses. So the, what we're doing is we're just showing that the stars fell, the hosts of heaven dis were dissolved, they fell. We see that it's just like this wind that blew the figs and they fell. There it is again. See? Their host shall fall down as a leaf falleth from a vine or the falling of a fig tree. It's the same exact thing. And how many times will heaven be departed like a scroll and open up? See, and heaven shall be rolled as a scroll. It's the same event. The angels are cast. There's war in heaven. The angels are cast. The fallen angels are cast to the earth. And this is the, their part of the wrath. Just so you know that. This is their judgment. They've been giving everybody a hard time making people fall for all these thousands of years. It's their turn. Okay? Arnold would say, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Alright? Just letting you know. I don't know if any of y'all ever saw that predator. But that's what that was. Alright? So anyway, <clears throat> that's the plan. The stars falling is explained in Revelation 12. Want to know what the stars falling of heaven? In Revelation 1 verse 20, he says the stars are the angels. Okay, that's, that's Jesus telling you what that metaphor is. That's the signified language. He does that a lot in Revelation, and then he stops. And you've got to look for it somewhere else. He tells one of the other prophets what it was. But he's telling you here, the stars are the angels. And it is a gross error when he tells you what something is to start thinking of something else. Okay? When he tells you what it is, that's what it is. But I'm going to say this. There's two aspects of this. There's something that happens in the spiritual, and there's something that happens in the natural. And I'm letting you know that while these fallen ones are getting cast to the earth, and in the natural there are actual meteor-type things falling, and the Bible is very clear in Ezekiel 38, it's what destroys the whole Magog army. So there's things going on and the spiritual and the natural at the same time. So you, I'm letting you know that this is true, but the other is also true about the destruction that comes from what's happening in the natural. Just letting you know, that's going to be a thing. All right. And um, I'm not telling you that because I'm smart. I'm telling you that because that's what I've seen. Just letting you know. Okay? I'm not this smart. Okay? I'm just saying things happen and I say, well, where is that in the Bible? Well, it's there, but I have to look at the Bible different. But it's all there. That's what it is. So I have to color outside the lines? I don't have any choice. Well, this is a place where, you know what, you can disagree with me, you can preach against it next week. You still be my friend. Okay? That's because this is the last place on earth that I could be and do this. Alright? But I can tell you this. It's been clear to me that those not out there not preparing the people for what's coming, they're going to be held accountable. I would rather not be accountable to Him 
and have some of y'all discuss it with me. All right? That's where I'm at. Okay? Trying to keep it good between me and the Lord. I want you to see this is what this says. You're going to have to match it up what's going on in the world and decide where you are. Okay? Everybody's going to make their own decision about that. But we're going to get past all this today because this is still all good news to me. Okay? So the stars are the angels. And so when we get back to Revelation 12, we can see there appeared a wonder in heaven. It was a great red dragon. We want to know who that is. It says this red dragon that was cast out was the serpent called the devil and Satan. That's who he is. Okay? We don't have to wonder who the red dragon is anymore. And so all the horns that are on his head are the kings that he's chosen. Okay, because the Bible says the ten horns are ten kings. And that is the one world government, the, the one that's going to be hostile towards Christians, the one that you've got to take the mark and, and deny Christ to get food because they're destroying your ability to have food right now. All right? And that's why they're doing it. Just letting you know. That was, the plan was already in the Bible a long time ago. Jesus told us what he was going to do before he ever got around to doing it because he's not that smart either. Jesus is that smart. Okay? And so, this is what he says. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven. That's how many angels fell with him. The third that was in there, was in heaven. And they, they're cast to the earth. See, so these stars, the red dragon of Satan, the stars of the angels, the fallen angels. And uh, this is, I'm not going to deal with this part here because this really doesn't fit with my lesson right now. I'm going to have to deal with this in layers. There's some stuff that I can't even show you because of what I have to show you today. All right? There was war in heaven. So we know this war in heaven is what caused these stars and, and Satan to get cast down. Michael and his angels fought, and the dragon fought and his angels. So he's saying that this dragon and his angels is the dragon and the stars. That's what he's saying, okay? Just, just look at it. And that, that there's a war. They're cast down, and they're changed. They, you will see them. The people in the world will see them. And I'm telling you right now, they're going to come as if they're friends, like they're going to help clean up some of this radiation and all this, and they're good guys. But I'm telling you, they're not good guys. Okay, but there is a great deception that's coming. Jesus talked about it. It says if possible, it would even get the very elect. Well, this is what it is. Is they're coming masquerading as something else than the devil and his fallen angels. That's what they're coming to do. All right? And so they prevailed not, neither was any place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent and the devil, which was Stephen, see with the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. He's very clear that they're cast out of heaven. They're no longer to come and go in their dark spot. And they're confined to the earth now, where they will meet their judgment. Okay? They're cast out. You want to know where they went? He tells you. They come here. Okay? They come here to earth. And when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, which is obviously the church. Okay? Now, the sixth seal lasts until the end of the tribulation. This is something else that I want you to see. Is, uh, and we're almost, we're getting close, y'all. So just hang on. Get some blood juices flowing here. So this is what we're saying in Revelation 7, verse 9 and 13 through 14. This is what it says. After this I beheld a great multitude, no man could number, of all nations, kindreds, and people, and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. So something happened, and he wanted to know, who are these? Where would they come from? And he tells them, the angel tells him, he says, These are they which came out of great tribulation, have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So these are the ones that got refined during the tribulation. They were lukewarm before. A lot of people are going to get it together when this kicks off. A lot of people are getting it together right now because they've already been through hell here. Okay? But the things that they suffered. Okay? Some are refined before. Some refuse the refinement until it's just too late. And so they get the refinement during... They have to learn to trust the walk with Jesus and all that where it's really dangerous. Okay? And so this is what's important is these went through it. They came out of the Great Tribulation. The Tribulation's over. So this is the sixth seal still going on, and we're, we're showing it not till Revelation 8, 1 does he open the seventh seal. All of this is part of the sixth seal. 
And so what we see is that the tribulation's over. They come out having their, their blood, uh, their, their, their garments washed white, their robes washed white in the blood of the Lamb. It says there before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple and, sinneth, and, and He that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. God is dwelling among them on His throne. And they shall hunger no more. They shall not thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them any more or any heat. That's what Raymond was talking about. <laughs> the good things that are coming. You jump right to the end of my lesson. Yeah, good, good shot, man. <laughs> good shot. He just saw the title jump to the end of my lesson. But you read, you read for yourself, though. I know you could get it when you start reading Zechariah for yourself and talking different and crazy like me. All right? For the Lamb which is God, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. Now listen, you think you need to be fed in heaven? Preachers want to make everything heaven because they can't, they can't control this information and they don't understand it themselves. So here, wherever this throne is and wherever they are in His presence, God is feeding them and shall lead them to living waters. Now where does that happen? Revelation 22. We're going to show you that in a minute. And God shall wipe away their tears from their eyes. And so the seventh seal is not even opened yet, and He's brought us out of the tribulation into this place of getting our tears wiped away. All right. Now we want to show you what the Bible says about where that all happens. And so this is our matchup. This is what we read in uh, Revelation 7, verse 5 through 7, 7 uh, 15 through 17 here. So he says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And some of you may know that there's a paradise of God. People are contained in that. And there's, there's what's heaven. And people in paradise are not allowed to go to that part of heaven yet. There's, a new, there's something going on there where there's a new place for them with new bodies. And there's also something going on here where there's a new earth which also includes a new heaven because the firmament goes back to the way it was when it had a water vapor around it and things aged really slowly. Okay, it's going back to that. So it's a paradise type situation. Okay, so there's a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of, the, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for the husband. So what's important here is New Jerusalem... We're told by Apostle Paul in Galatians 5, I think it was, that, that the New Jerusalem is the mother of us all, the, the church of the firstborn. Well, see, now those sealed in New Jerusalem, they, they, they are lifted up so this thing can be melted with fervent heat. But they come down in this city that will become a permanent part of the new earth. And what he's saying to us is New Jerusalem is coming down to the earth. It's coming here. It's not going up. It's coming down. Because there's a plan for a new earth. Alright? And this is the wife of God that is a bride of, uh, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Because this is where Jesus will reign. He says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. So now, it's not about a bunch of spirits in heaven. It's about God, Jesus being here. God is here with men. Okay? And he will dwell with them and shall be his, they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And this is where he wipes away the tears and there's no more sorrow or crying or pain or any of the other things Raymond's was talking about. Because the former things are passed away and he that set up a throne said, Behold, I make all things new. That includes you. And he said unto me, Write for these words are true and faithful. Man, if everyone could just believe if they could just believe. Okay, so we're just pointing this whole idea about serving Him day and night in His temple, tabernacle gods with men. It's a matchup. He that sit upon the throne shall dwell among them. He will be with them. He dwell with them. He shall be, they shall be His people. God Himself will be with them and be their God. It's a matchup. No more hunger or thirst or neither any sun or heat or anything that's bad. Neither shall be any sorrow or crying or any pain. Pain comes from some of these things. Hunger, pains, being too hot, all that. And God will wipe away the tears. It's an obvious matchup. The sixth seal brings us to the new earth. Out of the tribulation and to the new earth. That's how close we are to the new earth. Okay? It's all happening before the seventh seal is open. Okay? That's why I put that 
verse down there. In the last slide, right there. Seven seals open in chapter 8, verse 1. Okay? That's why I did that. Now, the end of the sixth seal. I'm not going to read that again. It's the same verses. But this is Revelation 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was these trees of life, let's see, that bear twelve manner of fruit, and yielding their fruit in a, every month. It's not going to be a season anymore. Every month they yield a fruit. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There will be no more curse. Whatever happened when our father and mother ate of that tree is gone. No more death, no more disease. It's taken out. We're like we were before. And it says, But the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. It will be in it. And His servants shall serve Him. They shall see His face. And His name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there, neither the candle. I don't have a match up there, so I'm going to let that rest for a minute. And He said unto me, These things... These, these things are faithful and true, and the, Lord, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent His angel to show His servants the things which must shortly be done. So again, He is saying, this new earth, this river of life, it's all in the shortly to be done category. Forget that nonsense about it all happened already. Forget that. That's a lie. Alright? So here's our matchups. When He says here, no hunger or thirst or sunlight or any heat, well, we see the curse is taken out. That's, that's a matchup. He, that's, he that see it, sitteth on the throne shall be among them that shall see his face. The name shall be in their forehead. That's a matchup. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. So we see all these fruits every month coming off of this tree. What do you think that's far? That's to eat. Okay? And um, he says he'll lead them to the fount of living waters. Now that's the river of life for feeding forth, uh, proceeding forth out of the throne. And uh, these trees on either side of the river. And God shall wipe away their tears. Now I'm going to have to do something this. How do we know? How can we know Revelation 20, 22 is not merely just heaven, but a new heaven and a new earth? How can we know that? I'm going to show you how we can know that. We're going to do another matchup. Rightly divide the word of truth if you want to know the truth. Okay? That's the way it works. Alright. The healing of a poisoned earth. That's actually in Ezekiel 47. We see this river of life. He brought this prophet there to witness it. The, 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 this river was coming out of the door of the house. And these waters issued out and went right by the altar. And, the, and it, it, here, here it went. He, he was brought to the bank of the river after it went so high. We jumped a few verses. And there was trees on both sides of the river. Where did we see that before? And then he said, These waters issued out toward the east country, and they go down the desert, and they go into the sea, which bring forth into the sea the water shall be healed. Why do they need to be healed? Because it was poisoned. Because of the seals. Because of the vows. Because of the trumpets. So these, the waters in heaven need to be healed? No. It's all lies. Okay? And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithsoever the river comes, shall live. So this water is bringing to life whatever was used to be in there and resurrecting it to fill these rivers. And so this river has power coming from the throne of God. It's a river of life. And wherever it comes, whatever it touches, it shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish because of these waters coming thither. For they shall be healed, and everything shall live whether the river cometh. And it shall come to pass that fishers stand upon it from En Gedi and England, and they shall, it be, shall be a place to spread their nets except for the places where we need salt. You need salt in heaven? So he's got these marshy places. He says, we're not going to run the river over that because nothing grows there, and y'all need salt. So you're going to fish in heaven and salt it and eat it? This is for earth, y'all. All this is for earth. And so, let's do a matchup. So this is a piece of what we saw in Revelation 47, verse 1 and 12. We saw this, this, this water coming out of the door of the house, and these waters going forth, and everywhere they go. It went right by the altar, right out of this temple kind of set-up deal. It went right by there, and everything it touched, it, it, it made alive. But then there's this tree in verse 12. By the river, the bank thereof, on either side thereof, shall grow trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade. Neither shall it be the fruit thereof be consumed. 
and it shall bring forth new fruits according to his months. The fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf for medicine. That's all from Ezekiel 47. What do you say over here? Revelation 22. So we see the river. We see the river. That's a good matchup. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And here we go. And by the river on either side of the river was these trees, and particularly that tree of life. It says here that it brought forth fruit according to his month. Here it says it brings forth 12 manners of fruit, different fruit every month. Fruit according, it's the same thing, just saying it different. It's obviously a matchup. The leaves there are for medicine, the leaves for the healing of the nations. Now that's going to have to do with the new covenant because the curse is gone. There's going to be a new covenant. You know God's not going to take away choice. So there's going to be consequences for your willful disobedience in the new world too. Uh, like it always has been. And I think that's probably why we're seeing the leaves were going to be for medicine. There's going to be probably some kind of remedy, but you will answer to the king yourself because it says we'll see his face. That's what we just got there reading about. Okay? He will be king of kings and the government will be on his shoulders just like we've been studying. So this is the matchup, y'all. This river comes forth just like it says in Revelation, but it comes forth the earth to heal it from everything that was poured out on it and, and, and wrath. And it fills it full of life and fish and good trees and pure trees. Whatever we need to eat and to be healed. Okay? That's a really good plan. What I want you to see, there's nothing left here worth saving except the people. Everybody's really interested in that here, and I'm glad for that. But be careful that you're not so concerned with that that you're going to pray against God's will for what time it is. Okay? We need to be concerned with what His will is and be obedient to His will. And if we're seeing these things because of these arrows, we need to wake up. Because what follows the arrows is the wrath. Okay? I wanted to talk to you about this because it's like what Raymond did. When he, he looked at the title and he jumped straight to the good news, which was the last five slides. Okay? That's admirable. Because everyone's going to look at the book of seven seals negative. But it's not negative. Not to the one in the right relationship with God. They're taken care of. You're already living in arrows. If there weren't shortages and pestilence and food factories blowing up, you know, sooner or later you're going to have to see what's going on. Okay? It's not going to get better. If this is the arrows, then what? He's not going to stop popping seals just because you. <coughs> Need a little more time. I want a little more time. Because his wrath is kindled against the wickedness. The high wickedness and rebellion against his laws. Now is this government sowing perversion? Is in every way they can get it? Yes, they are. There's going to be consequences for what they're doing. Okay? That's all I'm going to share with you today. I turn it back over to the brother in charge.